thing I don't have is the question of the day, which is, can I just make my own talk show? Apparently I can, and I just did. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Dave Bren Show. My name is Dave Bren. We are live. We are fully live tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I I got to tell you, my, I'm putting both my computer and my internet processing capabilities to the absolute test today because not only is the show live, but also my guest is streaming in here live. I got my pals here live in the comments watching the show. Uh, oh, Life After the Before Photo is here. He just subscribed to me earlier today and I resubscribed back. You guys should go check out his channel. He's got a very, very uh, inspirational channel that's tracking his journey through uh, weight loss and health and fitness. Um, go check it out. It's pretty rad. Um, I am, <laughs> I'm doing the show 100% live. I'm a little bit nervous that my internet is gonna like clunk out. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming that on your guys' end, it's probably a little choppy. I have this, I have this really delightful bright yellow message from YouTube below my stream saying, "Error! YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain a smooth stream." So it's very, um, it's very intimidating. YouTube is shouting at me the technical issues here. Jeremy Johnson says poster size, which I know is in reference to what we were talking about right before the show, which is my pop's trading card. He wants to get me a poster size version of my pop's trading card, and I could not agree more. All right. You know what, ladies and gentlemen? Let's hop right into it, because today, uh, today my guest is Larry Moss. And if you are a balloon artist, you know who Larry Moss is. Uh, Larry is, among other things... Um, he was one of the first balloon artists to uh, release instructional content on how to climb inside of a six-foot balloon. He was one of the first balloon artists to d delve into the structure of making faces out of balloons. He was one of the first balloon artists to create, actually the first balloon artist to create massive community-wide uh, balloon builds that involve people from the general public coming together, learning balloon art, and creating something amazing together. Larry is um, a jack of all trades and master of most of them. Uh, he's not only a balloon artist, but also a photographer. A computer uh, engineer might be a word that he's even uncomfortable with, but he's good at computers. Um, he just has a wide variety of skills that makes him um, a very wonderful and amazing friend and person to have in my life. Um, so we're going to get right to it today uh, because Larry has been helping me build this new version of the live show and a little bit of what we're going to talk about today will be uh, some of what we've been experiencing in uh, our process of making live versions of entertainment uh, for the internet that is. <laughs> um, so without further ado uh, let's head right on over and say hi to my pal Larry Moss. Here we go, Larry. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Hey there. Great. I have no idea what I look like on screen because your video is not coming through. I'm only I'm seeing you 30 seconds ago. Oh, okay. Um, well, you are perfectly framed. Just don't move too far to the left or the right, and you'll be in good shape. But then nobody can see what's behind me. You know, that kind of. Oh, that's true. That is defeat. true. Can you widen that out yeah. a little bit? No. That's all right. That uh, so that right. is uh, the woman with the the girl with the pearl earring or woman with the pearl earring. The girl with girl the pearl with earring. Girl with the pearl earring, uh, as recreated in balloons. Um, yeah, that <laughs> yet another thing to add to your list of like things that you do that I was like trying to remember. Like, what are all the things that Larry's good at? Not only that, he also recreates masterpiece photos out of nothing but balloons, which is just well, insane. I'll make it. I'll make it easy for you. Really what I am is a, a storyteller mm. more than anything else. And I just use all of the other things that I do to tell my story. And the stories change over time and the, the medium that I use changes over time. It's balloons right now. It was uh, magic at one point. It was juggling. It was uh, caricatures. 
it was, you know, whatever I'm always just playing with something. So that's, that's really it. All I care about is that I get to tell a good story. Well, and I think that's why everything that you do is as good as it is, because it doesn't come from a place of, I want to be the best balloon artist or I want to be the best magician. It always... Man, I mean, best balloon artist to me, that is so stupid. Like, what How do you have the mean? words yeah. best and artist? Yeah, yeah, in, exactly. In, like, like, Art, art is what you want it to be, what you think it is, what you so to 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 call somebody best at art makes no sense whatsoever. It does not. Yeah. Um, but yeah. actually, what I wanted to do, I asked you earlier what we were going to talk about, and all you said to me was, "Oh, we're just going to chat. Don't worry about yeah. it." So I figured if that meant if you didn't have anything prepared, I'd prepare some questions for you. Oh, this because is great. the way I see this. Because the way I see this, you know, you're doing this talk show, yeah. you bring people on, you ask them lots of questions. Nobody ever talks about you, you, you know, all this, <laughs> this airtime and you're just kind of in the background. I, so, I like that. I hate talking about myself. It makes me very uncomfortable. <laughs> right. So if I throw pictures at you, if I throw the questions at you, you're just answering yeah. for your audience that never gets a chance to learn about you. I think this is lovely. Um, Thank so you, I'm, Larry. <laughs> so I'm going to. I'm going to dive right into the, 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 the key one that I was right. grilling you on before, because because I think this is really cool. So now that you've had some time to process and think about it and and all, let's let's get right down to what are you trying to do with this show? Like, who is your target audience? Ooh, that's a really like, good question. When we look at the chat like right now. I mean, it's early. You're still building this out. Right. You're you're like and and you're talking to a bunch of your friends which is cool i'm not putting that down that's awesome this gives us a chance to talk when right. we don't always but like what who's who is this show for that's a great question um <clears throat> a little bit it's i mean i i i would be dishonest if i didn't say it's a good chunk of it is for me to give me something to do with myself um but <laughs> also like you i have like a similar motivation behind all the various things yeah, which is great, and I and I love this. So, all right, so I've got, all right, there we are back up. We should be, my cameras are still uh, offset. This is exactly what happened last time, so if those of you watching from home, you'll remember this exciting moment. <laughs> uh, everything shut down again, which uh, probably means that I need to either um, improve my internet connection or uh, my computer processing speed, one or the other. All right. Yeah, all right, I'm almost there. I just have to fix my other camera. Thanks for your patience, folks watching at home, seeing us uh, deal with technical issues on the fly, which is always fun. Okay, camera one, camera two. The color balance isn't quite right, but we're not gonna stress too much on that. And then I just have to get your frame back up. Um, okay. All right, there's Larry. The stream is back live. We still have, and we still have eight viewers, so the, we, they didn't completely abandon us. So that's great. Uh, <laughs> all right, so I was in the middle of answering your question. Um, yes. <laughs> I think where I think where I left off is so I have all of these uh, wonderful, amazing performer, creative artist friends, and I want to share them. But the thing is, the only people I have to share them with are my other creative artist friends. I want to find a way to share them with as much of the world as possible. Um, I don't exactly know what that means. I don't know what that's going to look like. I don't know what I'm actually serving by doing that. Um, I know that there's a there's a motivation too to like use whatever insight I can share from those people to help the people that I'm sharing it with. I think the knowledge of the creative process and seeing what cool artists can do um, and seeing the behind the scenes and the thought process of it is something that the general public can benefit from. Cool. <laughs> I, I, I love that answer. OK, all right. So another, another really deep question from my list. Mm. Pandemic hair. Like I, I have not managed to get a haircut, but your hair is always 
you know, ready for the show and all of that. So how do you do it? Boy, am I glad you asked me this question. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know I said I wasn't going to fiddle with the color balance anymore, but I look like I just got out of a, a suntan booth. So I'm going to lower that a little. There we go. That's a little better. <laughs> you can't see this, but that's fine. Um, okay. Two things. Number one, I have learned to cut my own hair. Um, that's maybe that's a, that should have been number two because that's actually the more impressive <laughs> one. <laughs> number number two, I'll, I'm gonna redo this. Pretend you didn't hear that. Number one, <laughs> I've learned to make my own uh, hair product, volumizing product, to make like so that my hair stays up. Uh, turns out, baking powder and conditioner smushed together uh, is better than anything else. Hairspray, whatever. Anything you can think of, all it does, it goes in your hair, makes it have a lot of volume, and you can stick it in place. That's the maintenance side. In terms of cutting my hair, I have learned to cut my hair, and here's how I did it. And, I, and you can learn how to do this at home, too. The hardest thing about cutting your own hair, especially if you have short guy hair, is cutting the part of your hair that's like up here on the top of your head, right? Um, to, you don't want to start practicing with a pair of scissors in your real hair. That's dumb. It's a bad idea. What you want to do is get a piece of paper. Uh, it could be, I use just like an index card or something. Get a little piece of paper like this, pinch it between your fingers, put it on your head, and then with your other fingers, no scissors, all you're going to do is stand in front of a mirror and try to just do this and actually get your fingers to pinch on the piece of paper. It's surprisingly difficult. It's the reason why it's hard to cut your own hair. But after a while, you're, you'll train your brain. Because what happens is your depth perception is messed up, right? When you think your hand needs to go forward in the mirror, it looks like your hand needs to go backward. And you're like, ah, I can't. Ah. So if you get really good at practicing this, then you can switch to scissors and the paper. Don't go to your hair yet. Don't go to your hair yet. Scissors and paper, then you cut, get really good at cutting the paper, and then you can get good at actually cutting the hair itself. Um, okay, so, so yes. This, this is all, these are these are the sorts of hard hitting questions and answers <laughs> that we need on, on this show. I That's, agree. I agree. <laughs> No, of course, in all fairness, I know you did not ask me to be on this to talk about <laughs> your hair and what it, so, so what care. did you want to talk about? Uh, well, I, I, I have mean, a couple I, I, I have, have couple more things. questions, but you know. I think, well, well, you know what, let's, uh, I think in the second half of the program, we'll, we'll, we will go back to a couple more of your questions for sure. Um, I had a couple of things, well, first of all, I want to say happy anniversary to you and Kelly, congratulations. Um, and you... Uh, you revealed something really interesting to me this week is that your anniversary happens to align with the Perseid uh, meteor shower and that you guys go out and uh, watch it every year. Uh, tell no, me I said that. we try to watch it every we year. We try to, It's yes. usually cloudy. Oh, right. <laughs> Rochester, so, yeah. So we've been in several different parts of the world trying to watch it, and it is usually too cloudy no matter where we are. Oh, um, that's but, a bummer. <laughs> but this year... We saw some really cool fireballs. It was nice. it was awesome. It was we went out and yeah. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Do you? I, I mean, have you been? You seem like the type of person that would be uh, have been interested in astronomy and that kind of thing for most of your life. What's um... yes and no. I mean, I'm I'm interested in science and mm -hmm. I'm interested in Star Trek. So how can you not be interested in astronomy? But um, it's not. I'm. Astronomy was never one of the areas that I was really excited about. I just, I'm always busy. I'm always running around. I'm always going in circles. And and it's kind of like watching meteors requires a little bit of patience and just kind of oh, yeah. settling down and breathing. And so there isn't a, yeah, I'm I'm fascinated. Like when, when stuff came out about the Hubble and, you know, whatever that was, you know, 20 years ago. Uh, when it was that was all happening, and now you're retiring the Hubble and replacing it with uh, oh geez, now I'm talking about this, and suddenly my mind is blanking, and I can't think of the the new right. telescope. But oh, the regardless, it, you know it's like Kepler. Is Kepler the new one? No, 
the new space telescope? Uh, some, somebody will type it for us. Somebody will um, type it for us. That's right. Yeah. So actually, I want to say, like anybody looking at me going, why does he keep looking off to the side? It's like because because the chat is on the monitor over there. Right. Yeah. And uh, so and just looking to try to catch some things flying by. Um, but but. Yeah, I mean, science is cool. So <laughs> so being able to, to go out and watch meteors and think about what it all means and how far away they are and right. how fast they're really moving, even though they're, they seem slow enough, uh, slow enough for us to catch them. Yeah, no. right. It's kind of crazy that we're just like hurtling around through through the empty void of space on this rock. And there's other rocks right. just flying by. There they are. Absolutely. <laughs> and and we're able to see them. They are big enough and create enough of a, a splash as they enter our atmosphere for us to be able to see them. Right. Wow. Amazing. Oh, the um, James Webb telescope. That was it. James Webb. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then, well, and then I also wanted to just uh, talk a little bit about like the, well, so, okay, to say a little bit of a story. So two weeks ago, you sent me a message and you're like, hey, Dave, you want to hop on a Zoom call real quick? And I was like, yeah, OK. It's like, I got something to show you. It's like, OK. We get on the call and you're just sitting there with your brick wall and painting behind you. And you're like, what do you think? I was like, what? He's like, wait a second. Is that a green screen? How did you key that so well? I don't know how well it's keyed right now, this is, but this when, is you, the fun part. when you called me. <laughs> Always the ham. Um, and then immediately after you showed me, you know, how well, you know, you had just like this perfectly keyed green screen and I could not tell at all that you were on a green screen. And then you started switching around cameras and there was an overlay or something. And I was like, what is this? Uh, and you introduced me to OBS, you introduced me to e uh, Ecamm, all these softwares that uh, that I'm using now to do the show and to do it live. And it's been great because over, I mean, you don't understand exactly when, I, I don't know if you understand how impactful when you came in to me with that was, because I was right in the middle of being so fed up with doing this show. Like I had promised, I had committed myself, I'm gonna try and make a show the work of editing it every week started to like weigh down on me. And suddenly you just like had this, hey, check this out. This could be a, a way to do this live. And that was like, I felt like a weight lifted off my shoulders. And I don't even remember what it was that I was pitching at you. Like, I, cause I knew I wanted to do something and you were one of the people I wanted to do it with. Yeah. I think you even explicitly said, you're like, I don't know, you're doing something. This looks like it. I don't know what to do with it, but this is. Well, oh, I have lots of ideas of where I'm going with this and yeah. all sorts of stuff. I mean, even um, yesterday, yesterday, I keep losing track of the days. Don't we um, all, pal? When, Wednesday, we had done uh, a magic show from here. I was working with John Wolfson, a great magician, great friend. Um, and we do all sorts of stuff like he's been I've been booking him a whole bunch over the last couple of years. And and I was just like, you know, so this was an opportunity to do something. We just did a live show from for him right from the uh, the studio here. Yeah. And so this was in the works. It was stuff we were already doing. And I was playing with all sorts of things to be able to get his show looking as good as it possibly could. Right. And yeah, so I wanted to show it to other people because it was like, no, 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 this is, this is really good. This is, I was thinking, oh, well, you know, with all of this tech, we can, we can live stream a, a panel discussion. Yeah. Like, you know, the, the talk about what do we do for conventions during the pandemic? If we're not all going to get together at a convention, there's still a way to do amazing stuff and a few of us getting together online. So I started looking at that and I think that was part of the, the pitch was that we are going to do something and I had seen that you were doing the show, right? but I hadn't really thought about it and connected. I was like, oh, he's doing his own thing. I was thinking, this is, this is something that I'm going to bring you into. And then you kind of turned it around and went, no, 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 this solves problems for me. Yeah. This is, you know, so it's been a lot of fun experimenting, trying stuff out. And like I said, for me, it's all about the story and where we can go with the, the storytelling. So it wasn't a critical piece for me to... Um, you know, the, like 
the fact that there are no balloons in in what we're doing right now doesn't right. matter. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I've got some balloons on the wall behind me. Right. Um, uh, although, wait a second, did I change? No, I think I, I changed my my backdrop. Hmm? No, she's still well, there. Mona is there. No, the girl with the pearl earring is there. On my side, uh, anyway. Fascinating. Is, oh, weird. Oh, interesting. Interesting. All right, Larry, okay. we're going to take a uh, just a quick break so I can tell the folks about my sponsor, but we'll be right back, and uh, I think you should ask me a couple more of those questions when we come back. How do you think about <laughs> Great. that? Great. Yeah, all right. Okay, we'll be right back with more from Larry Moss. Uh, thank you so much for watching the show. Usually I have a pre-recorded uh, little advertisement here. But, uh, you know, I was getting sick of having a pre-recorded advertisement, so I'll just tell you guys from the heart. Uh, it would really mean an awful lot to me if you hit like and subscribe. It really does help my channel, and it boosts my ego every time it happens. Um, I would also really appreciate it if you check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash Dave Bren. That's how I pay for all of this stuff. Uh, pay for the lights and everything that I do on the show. Uh, is sponsored by you guys over at patreon.com. Um, I'm also greatly supported, um, not financially, but through tech support from balloonartistcollege.com. There's a link in the description with a special offer just for fans of the Dave Bren Show. Balloon Artist College is a resource for education for event entertainers. Everything from uh, learning new skills like balloon twisting or face painting or juggling to the more kind of advanced in-depth stuff like how to run your business, how to create a website, how to do marketing, uh, all that stuff. So check out the links in the description. Head on over to patreon.com slash Dave Bren and remember to hit like and subscribe. Thank you. Well, it's the middle of the show. We are gonna finish up uh, my interview with Larry Moss in just a second here. But first, I wanted to show you a new segment that we're gonna have on the show, and it's called the Celebration Slide Whistle. Yay! That's right, the Celebration Slide Whistle. Originally, it was gonna be called the Self-Deprecation Slide Whistle, and I would blow it every time I said something negative about myself or the show. But that's a terrible idea. It's a really terrible idea. And I, I don't even know why I came up with that idea. Okay, let's get back to Larry Moss, shall we? <laughs> Boop. Hey, Larry, how are you? <laughs> Good. So, so while you were doing that, I figured out what was going on and why I thought the background changed. Oh, it good. did, because because all right. So the audience doesn't know what's going on here. Right. I am talking to Dave. We over hardly Skype. know what's going on here, to be honest. <laughs> and Dave is capturing our Skype conversation in order to process it through OBS and then send it over to YouTube. Well, Skype on my end, just because I have to do things in the most complicated way possible. I am not simply speaking on Skype. I am actually using uh, Ecamm on my end so that I can process video and do all sorts of things over here. <laughs> Hence the green and screen. And I have, well, so Skype had a background replacement on it, and I just looked at the picture from Skype, and I was really unhappy. So I was sending a picture from Ecamm <laughs> that had the background that I liked with the great green screen with no green edges around my hair. Right. And... Skype was taking that and replacing the background with another background. So Skype, have you become <laughs> conscious and self-aware? Yeah, so I, I turned that off. So we're yeah. uh, <laughs> Does I mean does that, that mean that, that Skype has a taste in art? <laughs> well, it was an experiment earlier where that just happened to be the the background picture because ah, okay. Skype was not talking to Ecamm properly before. So I said, okay, let me throw something up just in case I don't get that working. We really and I did get Skype it. and Ecamm yeah. into relationship counseling or something. Those two need to work that, this out. That it's getting awkward. <laughs> All right, Larry, uh, let's close out today's episode with a few more questions from you, shall we? Okay, uh, I didn't think you'd let you, me get this No, I think this is amazing. <laughs> it take, well, first of all, it takes a lot of the pressure off of me, right? Because the, the host is the hardest job. The person asking the questions, that's actually the hardest job. you got to come up with good questions. But, and, uh, yeah. 
Oh, wait, wait, wait. You didn't tell me to come up with good questions. I just wrote down <laughs> questions so that I could fire them off as long as you were letting me. <laughs> see, see, then the, the problem is that I only thought of it in the 30 seconds before you called me. So I wrote down things that I actually already know the answers to. Oh, good. Because like, what, did, what did we talk about before? We yeah. talked about your glasses. Ah, yes. And... And I've got, and I'm really kind of bummed that I can't get such cool glasses here in the U.S. Because you didn't tell me the secret to getting cool glasses frames when we were together in China. I'm very, very sorry about that. Yeah, when people ask me where I got my glasses, I tell them they come from China and they just assume that I bought them on Alibaba Express or something. <laughs> But no, I no, no, no. I had to actually we, we spent go a lot to China. Of time together in China. We have indeed, yes, uh, tw twice at least, right? Twice we've been, at least. Well, that I don't that, know. I think well, the, we were for, only there together. The one for the once. one for the zoo, but we were there for like three weeks or something stupid or two weeks. It was crazy. Yes. It was a long. So it, it long felt build. like yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, so it's Larry and I have done these builds in China, um, and. I didn't discover this either. I, I, I learned about it on my first time I was there, and the second time was when you and I were there together. There are these glasses shops everywhere in most big cities in China that they're just like, like every block will have one or two of these shops, and it's nothing like a glasses store that you've been to in the States or in the Western world anywhere. It's like just all of the weird... Because here's the thing, all those weird glasses frames, they're all made over there. So the stores there, they've got them everywhere and for cheap, cheap, cheap. So for between 30 to $40 a pair with prescription lenses, and they were made within an hour or two sometimes. And so, I came so home you from my last the, trip. You gave them the prescription? Oh, even... <laughs> Even better, I didn't have my prescription. I just had the glasses so on my it, face. They, they took the glasses off had. and they put it in this machine that read the whatever. And they and they don't have to... All of these shops also just have drawers full of blank uh, lenses or uh, uncut lenses in every single prescription that you could ever need. And they just grab the ones they need, cut it with a CNC machine, Pop them in your glasses and you're done. So I would love to, to now, you know, now I would do that if I could go back, but I'm probably not going to be back in China for quite I mean, a while. I don't think any of us are going to be back there for a while. That's all right. Yeah. Well, well it, I think what I was told when I was leaving the last time was not until you had a new president. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually told that. Yeah. That, that probably yeah, you... wouldn't be welcome back. <laughs> Um, uh, any other questions for me before we go? We got time well, for one what, more. Would you, what question have, like, all these interviews that we all do as entertainers, yeah. these come up all the time. Like, what question have you always wanted somebody to ask you? Oh, what question have I always wanted someone to ask me? Um... And Ah, you got know, you on that one. I think yeah, this is a good one. I think a lot of people ask the question, how did you get started? Which is a kind of a tough question. And I feel like a better question would be, tell me about your first job in this industry or your first gig or your first show. Like, be more Ooh. specific about it because... Like, how did I get started is, like, I do have, the, like, the story about it, but it's a very broad, it's like an epic saga over my whole life. Like, well, when I was a kid, and then as I started to grow up, and then in high school this, and then, and then, and it's like, uh, but I, I have found, and a little bit, this is a question I've been asking all of my guests in my show, which is, oh, and I haven't asked you this, we'll actually close the show with this, which is, what did you eat for breakfast? And it's a, such a very specific and it's not, it's not what do you eat for breakfast, like literally, what did you eat for breakfast today? It's very specific, it's about a specific event, and you're going to have, and you're going to remember because it was just today. And almost invariably, the, I find the answer to that question to be very, uh, reveal a lot about who that person is, um, and about their approach to life. And I've, if I think about 
my story of how did I get started, it's hard for me to look at that story and say this is a very specific uh, detail about who I am. But if I look at the story of my first gig, which I remember very, very keenly, there are a lot of little details in there that mean a lot to me. Like for example, yellow legal pads. A yellow legal pad was the very first thing that I filled to the brim in the weeks leading up to my first gig because I was so panicked and stressed about the show, I just filled the pages with versions of my script over and over. I would write out the script and I would make notes and then I would practice it and then I'd rip that page out and I would fill it up. And so, I mean, if you look at the floor around me right now, like this is, I have note cards from scripts and ideas from previous shows and all of this stuff. The funny thing is, what I'm trying to do right now is completely get away with that, like, or get away from that. This is the first time I've done a show without a script, without any preparation, with no questions prepared and look in at advance. What I did to you? I think it's, I think it's great. I, this feels amazing. I feel way, it, I feel lighter. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think you picked a great, a great question though, because it, it's funny. You know, I have certainly been asked how I get, how I've gotten started, and lots of people that have followed me or seen me do other interviews or heard interviews have have heard my answers to the, to that. I, and I, I think I give a different answer. I've got like five different answers right. for yeah. how I got started <laughs> because there are different, cause there are different triggers that, that got me into different directions. So I'm not going to repeat any of them here cause right. you're trying to end and get rid of me. <laughs> um, but, um, well, no, this just started getting but, interesting. But, we might keep this going here. <laughs> cause, cause I can keep talking. I mean, I, I have, I have a delivery to do it at six 30 tomorrow morning, but you know, <laughs> well, I, tell me about your uh, first, do you remember your first gig? I, I do. And there are a bunch of different times. I mean, the usual story that I talk about, not so much first gig. Well, yeah, the, what, what I would call my first gig was probably not, you know, it wasn't a formal gig. Nobody hired me. It was me on a New York city subway. Cause I used to, I used to spend an hour every day going into school and now we're coming home from school. And I was in high school, right. I went to performing arts high school in New York. So a lot of people know it as the fame school. Right. Um, and there was, you know, while I was there for music again, I've done lots of different things. You didn't mention that one. I don't know if you knew that no, one. No, I didn't um, actually. Always. So, so me. yeah, I mean, the reason I ended up in Rochester was the Eastman School of Music because I was a violinist, violist uh, up through high school, went to college, you know, thinking I was going to keep doing violin and viola, more composition and went in a completely different direction. But um, the I started as a street performer. I would ride back and forth on the subway to get to school and to keep myself busy. I would play with a deck of cards and I started doing card tricks and I started doing all of this stuff silently because I wasn't trying to entertain anybody. I was trying to, you know, nobody other than myself. Right. I was trying to keep busy. I was learning and I started getting really good. And, and the first moment that like really stands out with, Hey, I've got this, I can do this magic thing was when a woman standing in front of me, I was sitting down, this woman standing in front of me holding the strap, and, and, you know, the common thing on the New York City subways is that you at least pretend that you're not paying attention to anybody else. Right. And so I don't know that she's watching me and I didn't really care. I only, you know, was playing with the cards and I had done something and I can't even tell you what it was. And she literally fell over. She let out a scream, fell over. The train pulled into a station. She points her finger straight at me. And and says, "Devil!" Yes, the top of her lungs and runs <laughs> off the train. Um, so that wasn't so much a gig, but it was a performing experience that I never forgot. Right. And that right. was when the next day I got on the train in the morning and put the hat out in front of me and made some money going to school. And I started doing that regularly and then moved out to Central Park. So after school, sometimes I would go hang out at Central Park and play around and I made up business cards and started handing them out. And I, so it's not so much that first gig that I was paid for that, right. that matters to me. It's, it's the, what led to that first gig and, and the confidence that I could do this. Although right. it just occurred to me, I do remember a first gig. I was, 
I was probably about 10 years old, 10, 11, and, and I was hired to play violin at a birthday party. That, that's, I, I, I had totally ten? forgotten that until this moment, something like that. It's not wow. that I was very good. It was better than the kids that were at the birthday party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow cool. I, I got to go home, call mom and go, Hey, you got to tell me about this. Cause I remember doing it. I don't right. remember any details. Um, but, but the, the question, um, the, the more interesting question that, that Kelly just asked in the chat, I don't know if you saw it or not just, this is a little while ago, we've gone on babbling, yes, we was um, how do you want to end your, your performance career or this phase of it? Ooh. Uh, this phase of it or my whole, like, how do I picture I don't, like, the I, I'm, end I'm of not life? Sure, uh, or this show? She, she just said, I, I want to hear how you want to finish. So I, I don't know. Right. I don't know. Um I, I have become convinced that I will never retire. That is a thing that I know. Um, and it's because, well, I think similar to you, I don't think you're ever going to retire either because I don't, I don't know what retirement can possibly look like for a person whose uh, whole motivation is to like create and tell stories, you know? And, like, and the busiest people I know are the ones that are retired. Yeah. So oh, yeah. We, what? Who wants to retire? I don't have time for it. No, but the, but that does mean well we have to be smart or at least have some forethought about well what does aging in whatever it is we're doing look like? Um, you know, I well I will say I will say that that aging there was a point and it's it's now been ten years ten years ago mm -hmm. I said I am going to retire my my straitjacket before I'm forty. Because I, I, you know what, what does that look like? You get all the 40 is not, is not too old to get out of a straight jacket, but what is, right. and I didn't ever want to, I didn't ever want it to look bad. I said, let me retire that, retire the big physical stuff while I'm still really, really good at it. Right. Yeah. Because I wanted to go out on a high note. So you got to take that preemptive so, strike. Yeah. Right. So I think for me, an end for this phase of my career would be some, some project, something so huge that it, that's the thing that's going to be remembered. And then I can walk away and go into the next, whatever right. the next thing is. Yeah. And again, the next thing is going to be storytelling. It's just, who knows what it's going to look different. like. I mean, I think, I think what I want to do when I'm done, I'll never be done telling stories, but I think where I need to go now is to help, other artists tell their stories and that yes. goes to to the the show i was talking about with john earlier um his story now his show but i can be the technical guy right. making it happen producing is it is john's show available oh. for the public or was that a private it is uh, not it, oh, okay. it's not right now that was that was a private show and you know we can let them know that that we had this amazing conversation earlier today that that dave was part of and uh, you know, we brought in a few other performers that we could, um, you know, we, we, we went through that show and, and really tore it apart With for the sake of making comb. it better. Yeah. Earlier today, it was, yeah. there were six of us there really critiquing the show and that was a great process too. It felt amazing to be there and with it, other creators and giving notes. Yeah, and that also was done all virtually like this. Yeah, and I think one of the one of the great things about it for, you know, part of the reason it could work is that it was a really good show to start with. Yeah, and John was confident enough that he didn't mind the critique, and I actually haven't had a chance to follow up and talk to him after. You know, I'm almost afraid that he's going to tell me now he wants to come back and and re-record it after right. all of the things that we discussed, but. Um, yeah, I think I I think it started as a good show, and and even better now to to have that that opportunity to to really really hash it out with people that that mattered and people from different parts of the country and like you often get to do that. I think th this this uh, your show and I'm saying I think there's a great way to end is to to just talk about the where we are now. One of the yeah. topics that came up earlier yeah. is we need to we shouldn't be looking at how to just make the, um, 
shows work within the pandemic and the, the situation we're in now. We should be looking at what the next phase of our careers are using this technology. We've all been forced to do this stuff online. Right. So right. now let's take it, embrace it, and figure out how to make it better. And, you know, that's kind of what we were doing earlier today, where we had a bunch of people from different parts of the country all getting together discussing this this show and, and how to make it better. And I think not only can we perform for people all over, we can critique with people from all over. Right. And, and I just think, you know, so what you're doing, trying to develop something, not, not to get you through the pandemic, or maybe that was, that may have been the initial purpose of this show, but right. It was to have something that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I think we've got a lot of great potential, great direction. Um, you know, I started, I literally, I started the show a month ago with recording me looking at my camera on my phone and saying, can I just make my own talk show? Like I literally just challenged myself. Can I make my own talk show? Uh, and the answer is apparently I can. Here we are. We just did it. Uh, the answer, the question I asked myself earlier today is, can I do a fully live talk show? And barring one, <laughs> only one complete and utter failure of our entire system, the answer to today's show is, Apparently we can. Yes, we can, Larry. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. This was delightful. Thank you for having good fun. questions. This was fun. Um, we will be uh, putting up the links to where you can find more information about Larry Moss and Aragami Studios down in the description below. But now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to say a big thank you to all of you watching at home, watching live on the live stream chatting away and offering lots of fun input and comments yay from life after the before photo uh kelly cheadle says and that my friends is why larry is the bomb he is absolutely the bomb i think we knew that and now you know that uh i hope you enjoyed uh, me sharing larry moss with you larry is a gem and a jewel in my life and i hope a little bit of his light can shine on you guys as well uh, if you enjoyed today's show, why don't you consider sharing it with a friend? I have found that when you share the things you like with people that you love, everybody enjoys it a lot more. My show is executive produced by my cat, Baby Shark the Cat. Um, our show is a production of Dave Bren Media Inc. The theme music is by Adi Somek and the Unpoppable Trio. Our graphics and soon-to-come merch, check out for that next week, is by Jonathan Wilson. And the show, of course, is paid for by amazing viewers like you. One last time, we're going to say hi and bye to Larry Moss. Thank you so much for coming today, Larry. Thank you, everybody, for watching. This has been The Dave Brent Show. Wait for it, wait for it. The show's over! <laughs> 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 <laughs>